Here then, we're going to look at transparency, transmission and scattering. What we've seen so far in diffuse and specular is obviously reflectance. Light hits a surface and it bounces back off it, much like bouncing tennis balls off a wall. Of course, light does not have to bounce off the surface, it can also penetrate and travel through the surface. The most common way that we're used to seeing this is with transparency or transmission, so-called, because of course light is transmitting its way through the surface. Having that gives us a surface or an object which is transparent. We can see light through it. Pretty simple and obvious, but not the complete story. The missing parts of the story come in the fact that transparent objects very, very rarely just transmit all light through them. Light is basically energy and as it travels through something solid, you know, some of that energy gets lost. Or, another way of saying it, some of that light gets absorbed by the material. Of course, some of this we've already seen in diffuse reflection. Some of the light is absorbed by the surface and other light is reflected back and that's how we get the colour. And we get exactly the same thing going on in transparent materials. If they are thick enough, eventually at some point of penetration, the light travelling through them will be absorbed. A great example, of course, is what we have going on underwater, right? What we see when we go beneath the surface of the ocean. Obviously, water is transparent, light passes through it, but of course as you go deeper and deeper and deeper into the ocean it gets darker and darker. You go down in the deep ocean and it pretty much goes pitch black. The reason why? Well, because the energy of the light is absorbed by the water. By the time you reach a certain depth, all of that energy has been absorbed and thus there is no more light. The reason, of course, everything takes on this blue cast and this blue appearance, or sometimes slightly bluey green, is the simple fact that red light is absorbed more quickly than blue and green light. When we are making transparent objects then, we can determine what colour of light gets absorbed the most. This will vary from material to material just in the same way as different coloured materials give us different coloured diffuse reflections. They absorb different wavelengths of light. So can transparent material. Those that transmit white light, of course, come out nice and clear, like glass, or at least like pure clear glass. But we can always set colours which, of course, will tint their transmission. So in this case, where I'm setting the transmittance to red, that means that the material is transmitting red light whilst of course absorbing blue and green. You can think of it in terms of the values here, so of course I've got green and blue both at zero, so that means that green and blue light has zero transmittance in this material. Of course the other thing that you do to define transparent materials is to set their distance, how quickly light is absorbed. So here with a large transmittance distance on a relatively small object we get a nice clear object but as we bring that down to a much smaller distance then we can see that it rapidly starts to turn black. Why? Of course because as light is now travelling into the object beyond that small distance it is becoming fully absorbed so it never comes out the other side. Of course thin areas that are close to or smaller than the absorption distance or the transmittance distance still give us the expected transmission amount like this. Something else that we commonly see with, of course, transparent materials is the refraction index when light travels through an object or when it passes from one medium to another, or more correctly, from one area of density to another, it bends, it refracts, its path changes. Of course, lower refractive indices give less or in the case of a refractive index of one give no refraction whatsoever, no bending of the light and as the refractive index increases then light is bent ever more strongly. The exact refractive index will vary from material to material of course and we'll see more about those details a little later. One thing I will mention at this point which will come up again is that it's not only transparent objects that have refraction. We commonly think of it in this term because it's the 
bending of light through things. So of course, we see like this stripe against the background there, and we can see it bent in this fellow's nose or whatever that is that he has there. And that's how we generally think of refraction. But refracted light is really the light that passes into a material rather than being reflected off of that material. In the case when we were talking about diffuse and we were talking about how some wavelengths of light are absorbed, those which are absorbed are refracted. It doesn't matter that the material is opaque, that it is non-transparent. Light is still refracted inside the material. It just never comes out the other side. It is simply absorbed. I mention it here and we will mention it again. A little later on. So that's transparency and transmittance, you know, pretty straightforward. But there is another similar type property which is scattering, we commonly refer to as subsurface scattering. Subsurface scattering is sort of halfway between transmission or transparency and diffuse, if you will. Essentially, with a clear material like glass or like water or some such, refracted light, even though it bends as it goes through the material, it then pretty much goes through it in a straight line and comes out the other side, right? Subsurface scattering is very similar, except rather than the light passing straight through in a nice straight line, it scatters. So if you remember the graphic of diffuse reflection, light strikes a surface and then you get this sort of spray of light coming off the surface. Subsurface scattering is really just light going into a surface and then you get this spray happening inside the surface. Of course, just like transparent surfaces, this refracted light, this pass-through light can be absorbed, so some colours will transmit through, others will not, or rather they'll transmit shorter distances, and that gives us these subsurface scattering type effects that we are quite used to seeing. There are two terms that you will often see used in reference to subsurface scattering. These are forward scattering and backward scattering. Simply put, it looks like this. So, you know, here's a material. Here's the light source and light is traveling that way through it. The light that carries on, that is scattered out in the same direction as the light was originally traveling, that's the forward scattering component and the bit on the reverse which you can sort of think of in a way as a diffuse reflection happening inside the material and thus coming back at the light source that is the backward scattering component. Some types of material will exhibit more heavy forward scattering and much less back scattering other materials will have very heavy backscattering and very light forward scattering. Some might be even, they scatter both ways evenly, in which case you get this middle isotropic scattering. Again, it's kind of like a measure of how transparent or translucent the material is. The more transmissive it is, the more it's given to just letting light pass through it, or the thinner of substance, if you will, the more it will exhibit forward scattering and the less it will exhibit backscattering. Conversely, materials that are more solid, if you will, will show more of the backscattering and much weaker forward scattering. Something like glass or water, which we take to be nice and transparent, those effectively are taking lots of forward transmission, but, you know, without scattering because they're clear they're not scattering the light. When it does come to scattering materials like gels, again, as they're sort of transparent-ish, they exhibit more forward scattering and much less back. Whereas when you come to denser sorts of materials like skin or perhaps certain other hard surfaces like marble, at least the translucent marbles, they will exhibit much more back scattering as light penetrates a small amount and then is sort of reflected back again, then they will forward scatter it. And so there we go. These are the features of transparency, transmission, subsurface scattering, and of course, how they work with coloration, absorption of light, and how those factors affect the final look of our surfaces. Of course, we have the allowances, some of which we've seen, in our materials for handling these effects and certain elements are built into the different shader models. 
and as we get into exploring the shaders and the materials later on in the training we'll see all of that in more detail.